August is Women's Month and we at the station are showcasing powerful and resilient women. These are people who have gone through incredible trauma or change in their life and they have come back better and stronger. This is Beautiful Me. When you say rock chick, substitute, Cindy Alter has no substitute. Lead singer of Clout, She's gone through ups and downs and highs and lows, and she's come back at 62, fighting fit and even stronger. So, Cindy, you're one of my favorite rock stars of all time. Oh, wow. And that's because <laughs> you're a rock star on the inside and the outside. Sam. That's true. That's like, wow. That's a really nice compliment. Thank you for that. But it's only a compliment if it's not true. Okay. It's a fact. It, thank you. It's a fact. Okay. And and we're, I we're gonna be at it. Eh? <laughs> oh, we're gonna be at it. And I grew up with 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 clout. I mean, the song that starts with Sam was my favorite song when I was little. <laughs> my parents used to play it to me. Sam. And we're singing about you. There we go. I just lo I love the music. I love the empowerment. And then. I loved the band and nobody knew what was going on behind the scenes. You guys were overseas and you were everywhere and we all just assumed making millions and shattering apartheid rules. And, and, and when I interviewed you about four or five years back yes. with your book, No Substitute, which is so disgusting in my home because it, it's the book I keep in the bathroom <laughs> and I keep it next to the bath because I just love it so much. So it looks terrible. It's like all sort of... I'm watery, happy to hear that. and I've and, and I, so I love it. And the reason I love it is because I don't think I've ever read anything by anyone which is so unashamed of the fall downs and the get ups, mm -hmm. and unashamed of taking responsibility for where it was you mm -hmm. and where it wasn't mm -hmm. you. And in a world where nothing is authentic anymore, it's mm -hmm. just such a refreshing, awesome thing to have. So take me back right to the beginning. Mm -hmm. There you are, a youngster with a voice as big as Botswana. <laughs> Embarking. You're cracking me up today. <laughs> there you are, young girl, voice bigger than Botswana. <laughs> and it starts out, and from the outside, it is a dream come true. Yes. You're living a fantasy. Yes. That was never my goal, Sam, and I have to I state this oh. always. I wasn't a little kid going, I want to be rich and famous, I want to be a big star on the stage. This was a calling. This was music chose you when you were a little girl and this is the route you're going to take. And the music just led me to where it was. I didn't try to find things to do. I would go to a, a coffee bar and say, hi, I play the guitar. Oh, sure, come and play, you know, and give me 20 rand. And that was a lot of money. It was Nowadays, it's still and a lot of money. Still a lot of money. <laughs> I swear I can buy a box of eggs. Anyway, maybe. maybe. <laughs> so it truly was a spiritual direction that came from very young and it took me on this crazy journey from small to s bigger to big um, always just following it because as I said because I love music music is my muse and and music is what I was destined to do and to be and there's a great purity in that because as you say it comes from inside Mm. But there's not so much of a purity when you're out there on the world stage and somebody else is holding all, the, all of the uh, all of the cards. Uh, cards. Yeah. It's I had to learn that. Mm -hmm. I did not know that you could have so little control over your life. And I'm not a control freak by any stretch of the imagination, but when you see somebody else, I used to say it was like being a puppet. Mm -hmm. Someone was pulling the strings and then they would put us in the box at night and just put us to sleep. And we just had to fold. And then they pulled the strings again and we came up and came to life. So we were used and we allowed it because we didn't know any better. And how do you learn things if you don't get taught them? But don't you wish, because I know I wish, that all my life lessons had, had to be quite as big and expensive. <laughs> Why can't I learn things in a small, cheap way? Well, <laughs> listen, if we can choose how we're going to learn things, <laughs> that's another story. So we, took, we were talking about yeah, this earlier, yeah. and I just mentioned the word light worker. Yeah. It's when you're on the side of light as opposed to the side of darkness. You know, you choose. So we didn't have 
a big uh, shooting match with him. We didn't uh, sue him. We didn't do all that stuff. We should have, but we chose not to. At the time, his wife was dying of cancer. This was our manager that had yeah. taken all the clout money, as we know. And it's just, I always chose the other way. Mm -hmm. And maybe to my detriment, there are a lot of other artists out there that fought tooth and nail for what they wanted and said, I'm not taking this and I'm not doing that. And they got further, maybe, in some, some ways than I did. But you know what? I can live with myself mm. in every possible sense of the word. When I look in the mirror, I know who that person is. So let's talk on the journey about that, that journey to get there. Yes. Because it's not a quick one. No. That hasn't been for me either. It wouldn't be. No, it isn't. You know, as you, it's a lot of people say to us, oh, I wish I knew at 20 what I know now. But then how, if you've got it all at 20, then what, what else is there? Although, although, I wish I, in learning it, you got something back from your 20s. So, for example, once you've learned <laughs> surrender, you get your boobs you back. You get your boobs back and we get I the I would like back. that. Yeah, yeah. You know what? <laughs> what? Damn, girl. Hey, it's a good idea. No, I like what you're talking yeah. about. No. So, but we don't get those kind of rewards. No, we don't. We don't. That's why they still yeah. push up bras yeah. and really tight pants. I okay. like that. Yeah, I, I, I rely on that. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> girls got to do what a girl's got to do. 100%. When Mr. Gravity's unkind, Mr. you know, Gravity. we have to fight it off. I refuse to give him a name. <laughs> so let's go on that journey. So there you are on the world stage. You've performed all over Europe. Mm. You've performed in the States. You've, you're a household name in South Africa and still are to this day. And now you've got no money. And the cohesion of the band mm. is also, it's fractured. Fragi totally Completely fragile fractured. and eventually fractures mm. because the one girl says, I'm, I'm gone. Mm. She leaves, we get another guy in and we think, feels like the home run. This mm. is like we're going to the home stretch, I mm. mean. And um, then another girl says, I'm done. Mm. She walks and I'm like, there's nothing left. Mm. There's nothing left now. So what is a person who's just been a pop star for a couple of years being told you're amazing, you've got number one hits, you're fabulous, and suddenly you are nothing. So now I understand. How old were you, sorry, when this, I was, at this point? I was 22. Wow. So I, Cloud started, I was 19, then I turned 20. 21, 22, I was, I was actually just about to going on to 23. Okay. Young. Mm. That's young. It's very young. So I see, We never think you know, that at the time. No, though. sure yeah. not. Because we know everything, you know. <laughs> We're quite smart. <laughs> but I look at stars today, the Biebers mm. and the Ariana Grandes and all that, and they all bloody end up in rehab. Mm. Why? Because it's hard. And it's too much. It's too much and it's hard. And I was young and nobody looked after me. They at least have got managers and stuff. Mm. I'm not saying, poor Cindy, nobody looked after me. But I did not have anybody yeah. who had my back. It was not all one era. person had my back. And when Cloud finished, yeah. they dropped me like a hot potato. It was almost like oh, persona non grata. Don't go near Cindy. I never did anything to anybody mm -hmm. to warrant that. But our manager had told everybody, "Don't touch her. She's a drug addict. She's this. She's that. All kinds of nasty, nasty stories. Whatever." I had to live with that, and I had to drag myself from their bed in the morning and say, I will do something today towards mm. getting my life back. What was the first move? The first move was I knew I had to get work because I couldn't live on air. No. I had to get work. I met a new guy and he said to me, start doing shows with other bands because you haven't got a band right now. So he gave me good advice. Okay. And so I started doing that. I would do like a, not cabaret, but like rock, you mm. know, my mm. thing. And go and work with different bands in different places. Go to Durban, work with a band for two weeks. Go to Pretoria, work with a band. And then I started getting on my feet again because I was generating some income. Because mm. I had nothing. Yeah. When you talk about that time period in the book, I yeah. actually started feeling quite desperate for you. It is desperate. Yeah. But desperation... It either it's it's the fight or flight thing, right is. you know. Either you're going to jump up and do something, or you're going to collapse and lie on the floor. Mm. 
And for how long can you do that? Then my boyfriend said, look, let's start a band. Cindy Alter Band, why not? And that's when things really started moving for it. Mm. And then again, collapsing because m the relationship I was in was an abusive relationship. And I don't want to dwell on it because I know that's sure. not who you are, but those relationships are so often things we push to one side as so it's something we are ashamed of, sure. something um, we maybe did. Um, it's almost as though it's our blame, mm -hmm. our guilt. And when you're in it at the time, you keep thinking, well, if I'm just good enough, if I'm just nice enough, if I'm just this, if I'm just that. And afterwards you look back and you go, but I wasn't those things. No. But now I'm weak and I'm stupid and I'm helpless. So never does the victim get a break. Victim can't get a break because firstly what happens for me and for a lot of women I've mm. spoken to, you lose your confidence. Yeah. And you lose your confidence because you keep second guessing yourself, what did I do mm. to, to, for this to happen? And uh, did I deserve this? Maybe I did something. La, la, la. So you're second guessing mm. yourself all the all time. The time. Yeah. And you're just not sure of where you were to blame or maybe not to blame or whatever and you can't just say well it was just him he was just a bastard you know I also if, if other people aren't seeing that side well, as well that's the thing it's nobody else no, saw no. it you know people knew maybe about his past or whatever but I had to do that journey and when I was on the floor I had to stand up and say you know what you might have beaten me but you're not beating me there was a time you almost beat me Yes, because of what I was going through. I was, I was broken and I'd never dealt with it, mm. Sam. I didn't deal with it. And when you put it in that dark closet, it's going to start scratching at the door. It's like, look at me, see me, I need to be seen, out me, speak about me. And, and, and the door's locked, you know and you just don't want to. I, I didn't want to. I can't. I have to just keep going. I'm not going to stop and start analyzing and seeing what this is all about. I'm just keeping going. And it's, in a way, it's a horrible kind of simpleness where I'm on stage with my guy and yes. everything is fine. Yes, for everybody else. And when I get home, I'm off stage with my guy and everything's not fine, but I'll go back on stage and then everything will be fine. And it's Absolutely. a horrible kind of circle of, there's never a time, I always say when people are miserable in their job, I go, if when you get home at the end of the day, your problems are just beginning. Absolutely. There is something wrong. Yes, yes. And for you, it was a rock bottom moment. It was because I eventually thought I can't, I, you become a people play pleaser, of course, because you're always like, and on stage, hi, this is me, I'm gorgeous. I've got, a, I've got ma so much makeup on this eye because it's black mm -hmm. and blue, and this lip is cut, but there's lipstick on, and I look fabulous. And I'm like a bloody ventriloquist dummy. Nah, 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 nah. And I try to kill myself. You know, people say, oh, such a coward if he tries suicide. I understand the rock bottomness. I understand when you are helpless and you don't have anywhere to go. I had nowhere to turn. I had nowhere to go with all this that was happening to me. What happened on that day to make that the day? He'd been away. He went to play with a, a, a band in Durban. I had not been unfaithful or anything. I was always with him and he was very jealous as well. But two nights before, I was very, very low. I was, um, I was pretty broken. And this friend of mine, said, I'll drive you home, I'll drive behind you, take you home. He used to stay down the road. And he was a DJ at one of the clubs we were playing at. And he was a very cool guy. Never made a move on me or anything, but he came that night. He said, can I walk you in? I said, please, you know. Went inside, we sat down and had a ciggy at those days we used to smoke and, and a cup of tea or something. And one thing led to the other. And I tell you what, I just wanted somebody to hold me, you know. No excuse, but I just wanted somebody to be nice to me, to be s gentle with me, to, to hold me. And it, he wasn't in love with me or anything, but I wanted to just feel some love, real love. Mm. 
And I ended up sleeping with him that night. And um, my boyfriend came home the next day. And it, it, he didn't, st the guy didn't stay over or anything. But he knew mm. something was up. Because we had a, a terrible connection as well like that. I read it on your face. You know. Mm. Yeah. And he read something on my face because I, I was like, oh my God, here we go. Mm. And he said, what have you been doing? And who's there? And who's outside? And because the guy had come past and just hooted. Oh, jeez, it was starting to get complicated. Anyway, so that's how it started that day. That, oh my God, and you've been unfaithful to me. And I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've screwed up. But I'm, I'm done. I'm, go I'm done with us. I'm done. No, 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 no. And he locked the door. I couldn't get out. And... He was ranting, ranting, spitting on me, just how disgusting I was and all the, the bad stuff, the bad stuff. And I, I think I lost my mind a bit, mm. I must be honest. I went into a weird place, a place where I was completely suddenly detached from myself. I went somewhere else mm. and it was my body that was just there. And I even went into a cupboard and hid, even though he was right there. I thought, if I can just hide in this cupboard, and he, maybe he'll go away. But he didn't. He just went on. It was about five or six hours of this relentless, how bad I am and how terrible this is and how everything. Like everything and you've gone through. Everything. But in concentration. Yes, yeah. all, all together. And uh, I had a gun because I used to drive a lot late at night small gun but I'd hidden it away because he would pulled it out before and said oh, I'm gonna kill myself and all that drama when people are in abusive relationships codependent mm. abusive relationships and I'd hidden it and I suddenly I'm in the cupboard <laughs> it's actually quite funny when you think of hiding in the cupboard and I'm looking for the gun you know and I grabbed the gun and I stepped out and I took off the safety and I had this big mirror on the wall, I, I, I remember myself so clear. I'd pulled my clothes off because I was so nuts. I'd, I was running around naked, like I didn't know what I was doing. I just shot myself in the head. I really wanted to be dead. I wanted it all to, to stop. I didn't care anymore. I wasn't there anymore. I was. I was meant to be there. And uh, it was the last time I felt so, so helpless and hopeless. So you shot yourself in the head, but yes. here you sit because you came round. I came round. Was that the turning point in your relationship, or did it go on for a while longer? It went on for a while longer. It went on for a while long because I started forcing him out. Okay. Psychologically, I had to start playing a game, pretending I was weaker than I was. Because when I was weak and I didn't fight back, then he would be placated. So how did you find out who you were? I went into therapy. It was very good for me. Because I heard words that I'd never heard before. Take your power back. What does that mean? What power? What power? What do you mean by that? You know, things like inner dialogues and all these words that they use, the catchphrases, and things were making so much sense to me because nobody had spoken to me like that. Nobody. And this woman was smart and she was plugged in and she could see where I was going. She challenged you. And she challenged me. She did. She said, come on, you know. like." Step up to the plate here. And I'm not saying be that stoic person. I'm asking you to be very real and to just open up. That was the thing for me, to actually open up and tell somebody about what happened to me. You fought off a bad manager, metaphorically. Yes. You fought off a bad relationship. Yes. Two suicide attempts. Yes. And as you are alone and things are starting to fall back into equilibrium, mm. you had to fight yourself. Yes, I did. Because you got sick. Yes. And we had a chat yes. about what being sick meant. Mm. I'd like to go back to that now. 
For me, when I was told I had cancer, leukemia mm -hmm. to be exact, leukemia in, in, in adults is very bad. This was something I had to do on my own, even though I had doctors, people visiting, etc., etc. I just sit in that room with cancer every day for as long as it took. What a great bed mate, hey? Crazy bed mate, okay? Because he's out to kill me, and I ain't going to let him. Because this time it mattered. This time it mattered. This time I wanted to survive. I wanted to do my best to survive. I must say one thing that really helped me is that my years of doing yoga. I can believe that. My years mm -hmm. of doing yoga, I was just able to just l sit quietly and breathe. I'm in this position and I'm going to have to hold it as long as possible. As long as and that's all there is to it. So whatever it is that can calm you, mm. whatever you, tools you need to use, everybody uses different mm. things, that was good for me. And not only did you survive, it's 16 years now. I'm 16 years clear. I believe it's cured, yeah. They say after 10 years, they You're call rolling. you cured, yeah. And here we are. We're talking again. I know, right? Yeah. So what now? Because you certainly haven't hung anything up and knitted a sock. <laughs> I still can't knit. <laughs> I'll teach you. Will you? I will. I've heard it's very therapeutic. So you're not knitting. No, I'm not knitting. And you are still singing. I'm still and singing. you're still rocking on. I'm still writing. I still feel I have a lot of things to do. I feel like I've got encore careers coming. Encore. Encore. Okay, I've got another one. Oh, I've got another thing to do. Just about to record a new single that is so cool with a really nice record company mm. um, cool guys independent yeah. guys and I'm like yeah mm. you know keep doing what you love for as long as you can what so demons do you think you have left to face or do you think you face them all down I don't think we ever face them all down I gotta be honest because if you say, I've learned everything there is to learn and I know everything now, then you're a liar. And you're fooling yourself. Mm. I'm better with how I see myself, yeah. you know, and accepting this is where I am now. I might be better in, 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 in six months. I might not be any better. I might be just where I am. And I think it's like being being at peace with what you got. Mm. Still having goals and dreams and stuff. Because I haven't stopped that. But I'm not chasing as hard as I used to. When I talk to women, and men, but mainly mm. women, there's that feeling I think you get midlife. Because I see it a lot where it's, well, we're here now. And I've wasted my time. I didn't, you know, record the record. Uh, I didn't yeah. get the job. Uh, I didn't go on the trip. I didn't have that boyfriend. And now it's over. And you have fought back. And people listening to this, some people will be like, wow, I instantly need to climb a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> and others will Goody. go, well, it's easy for her because she had this great voice. You know, she always had this talent, always carried mm. it through. So without losing it, because I would, people who are hiding behind that, because I think mm. that's hiding, mm. what do you say to them? I, I believe in people should do what they are capable of mm. in, in, in any form. If you feel you can climb a mountain, go and climb the damn mm. mountain. If you look at yourself and say, I can't climb a mountain, doesn't mean you deficit in anything. Doesn't mean, oh, well, you've let, you just let it all go, didn't you? Because you didn't climb that mountain. Because there again, it's like that harsh judgment mm. of a life less lived. And who's to say it's a less lived life? Exactly. Who's saying this? So I believe we should be comfortable with whatever we're doing. But I do believe we should challenge ourselves. And it's just, I believe whatever you want to do, go and do it. And if you just like to knit and stay at home, play with your dog, 100%. As long as you're happy, but do not get to 90 and say, oh, I should have. Because the shoulda, coulda, wouldas are the things that, those are brittle. You are amazing. Thank, Thank you so you. much. That was brilliant. You asked the right questions. No. Wow. You had the right answers.
Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Thanks Cindy. Thanks for having me here. Old school and R and B.